in C Sharp, I'm going to jump over into Visual Studio. Um, I don't have to install anything new. If I have Visual Studio installed, I'm going to say New Project. And then in the list of what type of new projects, I'm going to scroll down until I find um, Windows Forms App.NET Framework. All right, so very specifically, that is what you must choose. And you're going to hit Next. And then again, it's going to ask you. This is going to be Lecture 12 and Create. And likewise, over in C Sharp, once it is through doing its thing, you are going to end up with a little form that looks like that. And if I hit build and then I hit run, I'm going to get a window that should say form one like that and have nothing else in it. It doesn't say hello world, it says form one. All right, if you don't get that, something's wrong and you need to debug that until you get to that point. So that's the starting point in both of the languages. Now let's actually talk about what it is that we're going to do. So over here in Visual Studio, um, when we pop into Visual Studio initially, your menus may not exactly look the same. They are wherever you last left them. Um, we're going to talk about how to use the drag and drop interface in a minute, but we're going to start off by dealing with the coding part. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do view code instead of designer, which is where it pops you in initially. All right, so in this case, we have um, our partial class form one, uh, which is going to override or extend um, form. And that's what we're calling it here. It's a Windows form. So we have our public method for initialize. And what, we're, what I'm going to do is I'm going to override a method called paint. So I'm going to say protected override void on paint, which takes in a paint event arg, we'll call e. So on paint is a very specific method that gets called, and this is how you do manual graphic design or drawing inside of C sharp. So in here, I'm going to define um, graphics. G is going to get a new e dot graphics. So what came in as an argument is a paint event argument, and I'm making a new instance of it inside of my method so that I can interact with it. All right, inside of C-sharp, we're going to deal a lot with pens, which are um, the different kinds of brushes that we might need to use. So we have pens and we have brushes. I'm going to start off with a pen. I'm going to say pen pen one equals new pen. And this one is going to be brushes.black so that I have a black pen to draw with. Um, while I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and make a paintbrush as well. And in that case, it's going to be a solid brush. Um, and this one is going to be called fill brush. And it's going to be a new solid brush with color black. All right, so I have made two pens. One of them is a pen and one of them is a paintbrush. I could do this multiple different ways. You can tell that color versus um, sorry, brushes.black versus color.black. There's lots of different options for each of those, and there's other things you can pass in um, and set as thicknesses and all the rest of the uh, particulars of the pens. But we're just going to do the same example that we did in Java. We're going to say g.draw line, and I'm going to tell it that I want it done with my pen, and then I'm going to tell it where I want it to start and where I want it to end. 40, 10, 10, 40. This is the same idea as what we were doing in the other language. It is still indexed the same way. Those are actually the same parameters I did in the last language. And then I'm going to draw my circle. It's called a fill ellipse. And this time I'm going to use my fill brush because I want it actually filled. And I'm going to pass it 1060, uh, which is my location. And then likewise, 3030, 30, which is my width and height. And I'm noticing that that should be pen one, not pen. All right, and then the last thing that we're always going to do is we're going to call our parent. Goodness, what did you just do? We're going to call our parent base dot um, on paint. E. I don't know why it's doing that. Stop doing that.
All right, and now we're going to compile that and we are going to run it. And with any bit of luck, no, what do I do? Namespace cannot directly contain numbers such as fields. And that is on line 21. Um, let's see, what am I doing wrong? Protected override on paint. Um, so we have drawing, we have Windows Forms. Um, yeah? Did I put this in the wrong place? Oh, I totally did. I'm like, what am I doing? <laughs> Here we go. That's probably going to work a bit better now. Sorry about that. And run. And there we go. We get our form, has a similar line and a similar oval. And just like with the other one, if I come in here and I change its width to, I think I did 60 in the other one, and I rebuild, you will now get a wide oval instead of a long oval. So you can change them around. All right, so these are pretty basic examples. I'm just drawing a line and a circle somewhere on the screen so that you can see what is going on with the graphics mod module and in the other case with the, um, the 2D graphics module. So there's a bunch of different options that you can pass. Um, I gave you the code of what I just wrote here. Um, so what can you actually do with these? So this is not a complete list. It's just kind of to get you started. Um, this is the Java list of methods. This is the C sharp list of methods. I didn't list the two that I already used. So like I obviously used um, fill ellipse and I also used draw line. And those are the C sharp ones. I don't think they're actually listed in here. Um, and likewise over here, you'll find that for most everything, there is a stroke or a draw, which draws the outline of it. And then there is going to be a fill in both languages, which actually fills it in. So the circle that I used was a filled circle. Um, the other type of circle obviously would be a unfilled circle. Um, so if you drew ellipse, um, or I think there are two L's in ellipse, and I think that's a typo anyway. Um, and likewise over here, there is stroke oval. If I used either of those, I would get the outline. The way that they're called is ever so slightly different. And like most things I'm going to tell you, you're probably just going to need to look up each of them. You see sharp version of it, that's the weird one. So draw ellipse. Um, in order to draw an ellipse, you first define a rectangle that is the size that you want the ellipse to be. And then you simply tell it to draw an ellipse with the pen inside of the rectangle. And it fills the rectangle with the ellipse in whatever shape the rectangle happened to be. That's just strange, and it's odd that it doesn't do the same thing when you do a fill ellipse. It just does, it just takes in the four parameters as we saw. So my point of all of this is that you need to look at the documentation for each of these methods because the way that they're called is slightly different. And especially some of them allow you to draw almost arbitrary um, lines, which can have arcs in them. And this is how you would define drawing a character in a video game. You would have lots of arcs and lots of um, detail inside of there. And so you have a whole lot of parameters that you can pass in there as to how far you want the arc to span um, between two different places. Do you want a fill closed arc or do you want it to be an open arc and so on and so on and so on. There's a million different options for each of these, but they all basically work the same way. You need a graphics context, um, which is going to be what you're actually drawing on, um, just like I did here in this example. So. This is how you draw in both of the languages. The details of exactly how the methods work, you're gonna to have to look them up when you go to actually call them, but you can see that this would allow you to draw an image. Um, there are also ones in here that directly take in actual JPEGs or GIFs. Um, there's an equivalent one over here. It is draw image, there it is. Um, so they also support the ability to load in other data into the background and then draw over it. Um, which you might need to do for certain circumstances if you want to load a background image and then have your characters moving on front of the background image and so on and so forth. Um, there's also the ability to move things after you have done them and to animate them so that they're actually moving, but that's beyond the scope of what we're going to talk about here today um, because this lecture is already going to be really long and you're probably already bored. All right, so this is how you draw inside of C Sharp and inside of Java. The code for both of those are in the slides and um, Hopefully you can replicate that and you should be able to do that.